I mean, you do have to give it to her that she can, like, pull it out the bag of piece of shit. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Welcome to Moth and Liv's Drag Race UK review. 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 <laughs> that. That. Episode 1. Well, technically, episode two. We're reviewing episode two, but with a recap of episode one. So, I'm Moth, born and bred in Norwich. My drag is like pretty freaky. Um, I like to look like an androgynous insect. My performances are kind of arty and weird and freaky. Yeah, I like to be androgynous, so don't really fit in with the you know, classic drag binary. I'm Liv. Really? Yeah, I think so. Yeah? I think yeah. yeah. I live. Um, I'm originally from Nottingham, so I might have a bit of a twang in my voice sometimes. And I moved to Norwich three or four years ago. Don't know how long it was, but I'm here now. And that's what matters. And that's all that matters. Um, my drag is uh, earth tones. I don't wear wigs, I use my own hair. I feel like my drag is an extension of me and just putting ma more makeup on and uh, flowier clothes on. It does bits to me, so. Feeling the fantasy? Yeah, mm-hmm. Feels like it's from Charity Shop. Same. Really? Yeah. Oh my god. Twinning. I love us. So, UK version of Drag Race. I don't know, I feel like it's been in the like consciousness of drag people and fans about there being a UK version for a long time. There was the competition that RuPaul did to find a Drag Race ambassador, which Vivian won. That was back in like 2015. Mm. So, four years ago, almost five. Shout out She Foam. Shout out She Foam, Norwich local who competed in that too, alongside the Vivian. I feel like kind of the drag scene in the UK has already become so influenced by the US mm. Drag Race that I kind of feel like it's not gonna change the scene in the UK like that much, but maybe going off of this first episode, if UK drag race influences UK performers, we'll have a lot more um, minge being uttered. Um, <laughs> first episode, it was just full of um, minge. Oh no, it was full of tuppence. Tuppence, tuppence, sorry. Oh, well, the minge talk, but there's no actual minge on yeah, the show. That's true, isn't it? No one's actually. Tea. Talking. Everyone's like, so much minge, but there is none. <laughs> okay, another thing we need to talk about, inclusivity of Drag Race. So, I think we were kind of hoping that this being a kind of a fresh start for Drag Race, that it would be a good opportunity to showcase the full plethora of talent that there are, is in, in the UK scene, because it's extremely diverse, the UK scene. So, what do you think? I mean... We have kings, we have trans performers, we have AFAB performers, we have female body performers, we have all kinds of performers who exactly. have been, and performers of colour, who have been not included in this first wave of Drag Race. Whether or not they just wanted a successful first season to make future seasons, shouldn't really matter because the performers who are being excluded are phenomenal and may even have done a better job than people who go on the show. That's really shady. Speaking for myself, like as a cis male performer, I'm not just performing around other cis male performers, it's everybody. And yeah, it's just a bit of a shame for that not to be represented in Drag Race UK because that is UK drag. This is the drag that's happening right now. In the bars, in the clubs, that is drag. Yeah, we want to have our little critique of the show and celebrate the people who are on it and also celebrate people who wouldn't be able to get on it. So hopefully we're going to have... We'll have a go. <laughs> <laughs> no, hopefully we're going to have special guests. One that's standing behind the camera right now. Just come say hi. Um... <laughs> Hello! <laughs> so first episode we're gonna do a little mini recap who did we know walking in who did we know or when we saw the meet the queens gothy of course yeah um, before the season she was pretty big on um 
Or Insta. the London scene, Instagram. Yeah, actually, I met Gothi on a bu bus once. No way. Gothi is from Leicester, and I studied in Leicester. One time I was just travelling to London to see my friend, and I saw Gothi on the bus, and we talked for about, like, 20 seconds, probably, and oh. then... <laughs> And then I messaged her on Instagram, and she didn't reply. You two go way back. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Who else? Yeah, I need the Vivian. Oh, of course. Because yeah. it's the Vivian. Mm. She's also had a massive glow up. Her makeup now is like... Yeah, I like her cheeks a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I... <laughs> a name of Bag of Chips. Oh, from yes. From a particular article about a political situation. Um, we'll get into that. Didn't know Vinegar Strokes. Um, no. But then as soon as they said she was on, everyone's talking about Jamie. And we we went to go be part of the film earlier this year. So she wasn't yeah. there. <laughs> but um, I just thought I'd drop in that we've been in a film. <laughs> <laughs> we might be in the corner of one frame for one second. So when that film comes out next year, we'll be look for us we'll and signing. a lot of the rest of the Norwich drag scene. So yeah. oh Cheryl, oh, Hole. Cheryl, I. I knew of Cheryl Hole, um, I don't know how. <laughs> I saw her on a TV program. She was on Your Face, Not Mine. Is it, I don't know if it's actually called that. I don't know, it's something, something like, like that. Jim Carrey and, uh, the American woman. Jim Carrey? No, Jimmy. Jimmy. <laughs> Jimmy. <laughs> Who was your favourite from the runway, the first episode? Ooh, something one's posted stamp. Very smart, loved that. Even though the judges didn't like it, I liked Gothi's tiger look. Kind of same. People like fucking red hair for Phil. That's cool. Like it wasn't that bad. I think it was just the you know the <laughs> blues look. That's the coin. Yeah. That was fucking great. She came out round that corner, turned her head. I was gagged. Like it was so good. The lip sync. I was watching it on a coach. After it finished, I kind of like paused the episode and I just sat there and went, Oh no. Okay, so episode starts out, Gothi is gone, the queens all come in, I don't know, everyone's like really nice. Who was it? Cheryl said, Gothi is now a national icon. Now Gothi's a national icon as well. The drama between Cheryl and Vivian, it was a bit like the producers were kind of like, yeah. we need some drama, Vivian, he's making talk some shit on. and we'll edit it. To be fair, Vivian is giving the nice little quips for them that they need, like, uh, yeah. the body's not gone cold yet, girl. And something I love about that scene is when the Vivian goes, Shadow, Shadow, Shadow. <laughs> Already, all I can hear is Shadow, Shadow, Shadow. Try saying Cheryl three times in a Liverpudlian accent. Shadow, Shadow, sh no. Shadow, 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 It can't be done. So the queens walk into the workroom just before the mini challenge, and the Vivian's wearing her repeater badge. Yeah. Um, how do we feel about that? Like, it's nice. I I wouldn't mind. Actually, no, I'm not bothered. I don't want one. But, um, <laughs> yeah, and Cheryl's got a repeater badge. She feels absolutely amazing. Yeah, Vivian has. Sorry, not Cheryl. Cheryl, Cheryl Oops. Wishes. Speaking of Cheryl, yeah, she did throw some very forced, cringy shade. Hmm. This girl's got a receipt. Like Davina's hairline's receding. Her hairline's not receding. Yeah. She has a she has Mohican. a mohawk. Mohawk. Mohican. Yeah. Bring it to your mum's house. Mum's house. Mm. <laughs> Bring it to your mum's house. Mum's house. <laughs> so, the mini challenge. Vivian has to line everyone up. Scaredy Cat was chosen last. Um, Can't blame anyone for doing that. <laughs> i only been doing drag for 11 months. Not actually gay. I've never actually been to a drag show. When she's just sitting there like, I know they've picked me last, but it's going to be even better when I win. Like, I just love that. <laughs> she's so, she believes so much in herself, and I like, I but really all, appreciate that. That's what's got her onto Drag Race. Like, it got her all the way there. Yeah, and also... She won't take her to the top. Like, well, I mean, we see the episode, so... <laughs> but, she gives... <laughs> so RuPaul explains to everybody that the first challenge is called Downton Draggy, a parody of... Downton Abbey. I think I've never watched an episode of Downton Abbey. You've never watched an episode of Downton Abbey? I've never watched an episode of Downton Abbey. It's incredible. It's how England is all the time. It's amazing. <laughs> Vivian and Scary Cat get to choose their teams. Yeah. As they're choosing the teams, there's a lot of talk about uh, tuppence. 
That word has just been mm. thrown around so much. She works like tuppence. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't have the same ring. Next, the teams all go and sit down and they have a little chat about what they're gonna do. Yeah, something Wong seems like really not confident in herself. She's so self-deprecating. Yeah. It's, it's really like... sad. Because I think she's wicked. And um Shirahol is not friend. I'm not threatened. Me personally, I'm not threatened. I've been performing since I was six years old. Bring it on, girls. <laughs> also, a moment that I enjoyed was um, RuPaul saying, Oh, Blue, you were safe last week. You're flying under the radar. It's week two. Those are the moments in Drag Race that I love when it's just the producing of the storyline is so obvious. Like, the radar's like, not even switched on yet. How could she be flying under it? So they're filming Downton Draggy. I can't help but not like Vinegar's wig. <laughs> when we watched it, we thought she was wearing some kind of turban. Uh, some yeah. kind of hat. That wig was a choice. I feel like Bagger is just giving the American audience what they want because yeah, she but... is like the epitome of the stereotype of British Victorian, like tea and crumpet rumors. <laughs> Oliver Twist. Yeah. And people love that shit. I mean, she was great. Like, the acting as a whole in this group was really good. Much better! <laughs> oh, 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 that wasn't much better. Much better! <laughs> Next, we move on to Team Skeddy. It's a little bit of a mess. Also, just something about Davina in that scene just reminds me so much of a Wallace and Gromit character. Yes. What's all this racket, Lady Edie? I mean, her Yorkshire accent. Yeah. Which, I mean, all the Wallace and Gromit characters have that. Like and that, that makeup. Eyes. Yeah. yeah. She looks like she's made a plasticine. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like Scaredy's whole whining thing was mm. just like something from like a bad kids' TV show. Yeah. It was too much of an action and not enough acting. So, it's elimination day. Vivian and Cheryl. Yeah, Cheryl um, telling Blue how she felt about her performance. Tad shady. But Vivian coming back with, wind your neck, riding. <laughs> wind your neck, riding. Best line of the show so far. I, said, I, I think you're a little bitch. I think you're a horrible little bitch. We've come to the emotional part. I appreciate that they've kept this in yeah. Drag Race UK, especially some Ting story. Yeah, about her definitely. parents not knowing about her doing drag or being gay or being with their partner for five years. I guess cultural attitudes towards coyness. Uh, so let's talk about the runways. Mm. First up, Vivian. Great, loved it. Grace Jones reference. Yeah. I'm there. The fabric. Really Fucking like style. That. Did you watch the fashion photo review of this episode? I did. Raja booted this look. I so was then. confusion. Yeah. She did toot Something Wong, who is up next. Well, I loved Something Wong's. It still had that Grace Jones reference in there. Um, I love a big, bold head. <laughs> I don't know. I wasn't that into it. I mean, I think it was cool, but I think because it was after Vivian's, the reference was kind of similar. I don't know. It just looked a little bit cheap compared to Vivian's because Vivian's was so elevated. Yeah. Taekwondo, no, she better go. <laughs> No. <laughs> no. Is that your response to Vinegar? Next catalogue. <laughs> <laughs> this was very much, um, I work for Aviva. <laughs> <laughs> Bagger. Um, yeah. What? She was like, fuck, I need a Bond girl outfit. I don't have one. I know. I have this Liza Minnelli costume. I'll throw a character on it. Yeah. And I love it. Which they did. Liza Minnelli. I mean, you do have to give it to her that she can, like, pull it out the bagger. <laughs> Piece of shit. <laughs> Cheryl. Any home is gone. No Cheryl home. The only part I liked about Cheryl's was double O dipshit. <laughs> she was like, I'm Met Gala ready. I'm sorry, that dress was not Met Gala. Like, mm. the swimsuit underneath, it would have been cute, but the fit of it was very strange. Yeah. Like, particularly on the chest. Crystal. Fucking work. Mm -hmm. I mean, I love me a head sock. Yeah. The orange coat was divine. The bondage, James bondage. Work. Compared to everyone else, it was just, it was really good. And it fit the theme, and it was her own twist on it. And the body hair. 
I appreciate power, I appreciate the body hair <laughs> on Drag Race, but to see someone have visible body hair and say femininity isn't a completely shaved body, I appreciate that. Scary. Scary cat. She seems to love an oversized jacket. That is what I was going to say. Mm -hmm. She's always got a jacket on. Promo, mm. entrance, this look. First challenge. I did like the campy performance element of it with the gun. Mm. Like, it was cool, but um, I think the costume overall, it did appear very like, I've got these pieces, mm. I'll put them together and make like a, I'm a Bond girl who is in an aeroplane. Um, Davina, what do you think? I didn't get this look. No. It felt very uncohesive, like, I don't know if I just wasn't getting a reference that she was giving, but it just seemed odd, like, the coat with the eye patch, and then this bright red hair, and then her doing, like, the kung fu moves, like... Yeah. They seemed more like Bond villain than Bond girl. That's true. I'm getting a bit hung up on the Bond girl thing, especially when we got to blue, and... Blue's so pretty, she could have pulled it off really well, but she had the three tits. I liked the look. I liked that she took it in a sci-fi direction, but it didn't read yeah. Bond Girl. My question is, why is it always three tits and never just one massive tit? Yeah. True. So, um, we watched the Jump and Draggy videos after the catwalk. Um, I did not have a clue what story it was. Yeah, I'm very bizarre. They cost so much money. And a lot of the writing in these challenges is very questionable. <laughs> Vivian's team, what do we think? Bless. I think Vivian was great. Vinegar's whole reading bit was pretty cringe. Yeah. Not the American kind. <laughs> Fair. That whole scene with something wrong, Bagger carried it. Like, with Becky. That's why they call me Becky with the good hair. They actually call me Becky with the good hair. <laughs> I think this. The story for the second teams was even more difficult to follow. Can candles, the rich people were now poor because they didn't pay the candle bill. Yeah. Because Crystal kept taking pictures with the candles. It was a lot of like drag race acting challenge tropes. Yeah. But once again, for this team, Davina 100% carried it. Yeah. She um, now looked like a Ratatouille character. <laughs> no, no, no. She looked like not Ratatouille, flushed away. Flushed Away, the other rat one. She's like Rita, the girl right in Flushed Away. <laughs> flushed Away realness, yeah. I can't wait for that runway. So, Team Vivian is the winning team, and Bag of Chips is the winner of the challenge. Everyone's breaking down. Cut to the workroom untucked. Yeah. Guys, we're on episode two. I can't wait for episode three, <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Cheryl lets something know. She made a nasty comment about her. Vivian says, oh, this is damage control. <laughs> I love that we're at this point in Drag Race where everyone's so self-aware of like how everyone is presenting to be looked at by the audience in a certain way. Oh, I am yeah. a star. I'm a fucking star. I am a star. I am a star. You are a star. It gets emotional. They're saying up for the storyline with Cheryl. Now she's had a good cry. We've had a whole story arc and it's been two episodes. Yeah. It's time for the lip sync. Yeah. Bottom two, Scaredy Cat, Blue Hydrangea. Ranger. Made the best Scaredy Cat win. <laughs> really like Luster lip sync. Oh, Blue you know, turned it. Blue that turned jump. it. Yeah. There was a lot of the same moves going on. I reckon Scaredy could be a good performer if she clocked up some stage time. Yeah. Not bad for a first gig, like she said. And uh, I think I proved that you don't have to be gay to do this. Yeah. <laughs> However, I would like to see more trans, kings, gender non-conforming people on Drag Race before more straight people, so... That's my tea. <laughs> um, goodbye, Scaredy. Yeah, see you, doll. Goodbye, viewers, then. <laughs> <laughs>